Brian Danielson versus Sammy Guevara, two out of three falls. So, first of all, Dan Brian Danielson pummeling people, always fun. We'll never complain about that. So, the first fall is right away. Sammy Guevara hits him with a chair for the DQ. Brian's bleeding everywhere. Second fall. Oh, but I should add, uh, he hits him with a chair for the DQ. But then, he grabs a microphone and begins to smash Danielson with it over and over again. He should have been disqualified right there. Well, this is a very, very important point. The way they do best of three falls matches, this absolutely should have been a disqualification. Because after the second fall, the third fall begins immediately. So the moment the ref called for the DQ, the second fall should have immediately started. And so when he hit him with the hammer, it should have been a disqualification again. But instead, they let it go until the guys got into the ring. I guess you could argue, I guess you could argue that the referee's discretion was, I can't start the second fall until both men are in the ring. Hmm. Because if you attack somebody before the bell, which we saw in this show, the match doesn't start until I both suppose, guys get in the ring. I suppose that is now, true. Now, the announcer should have explained that. Or you should do the deal where... You know, you ring the bell between falls, so as a fan, you know when the fall begins and the fall ends, as opposed to the way they did it here, which was, you know, the moment it's over in the second fall, the third fall starts. Well, that didn't happen in the first fall, but they were outside. It's just needed better. We need to know what the rules are. That's the key. We need to know what the rules are. They need to be explained by the announcers if we don't know. Yeah. So I should clarify, uh, when when uh, Guevara hit Brian with a chair, he actually threw the chair at him. He didn't swing it. He threw the chair at him. And they're discussing this and how the edges of the chair cut uh, Brian open. And Taz knows, you know, I've had a chair thrown at me many times by a guy whose name Ryan is with Ram. But we'll move on. I laughed at that a lot. So uh, Sammy very quickly wins, his, wins the second fall, pins him with the go to hell. So those two falls happened really, really quickly. And uh, there was also a lot, or not a lot, but Ty Mello was interfering once or twice. And finally, she's ejected. And, like, I was enjoying it, but I've seen a lot of Brian Danielson matches and a lot of Sammy Guevara matches like better than this. And I, 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 was, I felt like this, this is, I expected better of this match for a while. But then when Ty Mello finally is ejected and they just have a great wrestling match, holy shit. The last part of the third fall of this was tremendous. Excellent, excellent stuff. So uh, not only is Danielson bleeding, but G Guevara is very specifically working over the nose. And every time he puts him in a hold, he doesn't just go across the forehead or the throat. He grinds that forearm right across Brian Danielson's nose, really put him in pain, really working over the cut, making him bleed more, making his life a living hell. A uh, big spot where uh, Brian gets knocked off the top of the floor. Sammy does a shooting star press on the top to the floor. Giving Excal Excalibur a chance to name drop Thunderbird Brett Como. And again, I watched this show here on Sunday, the days after the fact. So I knew this name drop was coming. It still caught me off guard. I still laughed my ass off. The announcers are laughing their ass off. They, they knew no one was going to out, ex uh, out, out obscure Excalibur on this deep, deep, deep cut here at our national pro wrestling show. Uh, both guys try their finishers. Both are countered. Sammy uses Chris Jericho's own lion tamer, but Brian Danielson gets the ropes. I hope Jericho chews Sammy out for killing his finish that way. But anyway, uh, Danielson hits the knee strike, but rather than going for the cover, he goes to stomp Sammy's head in, but Sammy takes advantage of the power knuckle hold, turns it into a springboard flipping DDT, but he goes for a senton. Danielson gets the knees up. He lays in the crucifix elbows, and he does the bell lock. But just as Sammy was doing to him, locks that grip right across Sammy's nose. Sammy's fighting for the ropes. Brian switches it so he gets the arm in there, too. Sammy passes out, and Brian Danielson wins. And this was beautiful, beautiful violence, and I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, third fall was awesome, but the story of the whole match was great because it's Brian Danielson. Let me tell you about this guy. He can work. He's a very good professional wrestler. He, uh, he has a brain for this business. Mm. And unfortunately, uh, he also has a brain that's been concussed many times, and he still goes out there and does all sorts of stuff with his head that he probably shouldn't do. He did get his hands up for that chair shot. Man, he fucking looked like he ate that GTH in the second fall. It was just a big thunk on this guy's fucking poor head. But anyway... He came up with this idea, which was Sammy wins the first fall quickly with a not just a disqualification, but a violent one. 
He hits him with a chair to his bad head to bust him open and then take advantage of it to win the second fall. So uh, it gave Sammy a win via pinfall. It did not make Brian Danielson look weak in any way and made Sammy look like a better heel. He was conniving by coming up with this idea to, you know, injure the guy even if he had to uh, lose a fall to do it. And then in that third fall, Danielson is still selling. And it gave Sammy a chance to work over the blood and just be a horrible person. But then at the end of the day, Brian got him in a hold and he made him say, Uncle! So he was truly the better man in the end. He overcame. I thought the match was great. I was watching this. And we are uh, we are one week away from the pay-per-view now. And as I was watching it, we were a little over a week away. And I thought, this is the main event. Brian Daniels and Sammy Guevara. Best of three falls. Why? Like, I know they built it up well, and all. But like, okay, so what's the point here, you know? So I figure there must be some angle afterwards to set something up for full gear. Something, some storyline. And instead, we just got a great match, and then the show ended. Well, I will... I, I, and that was I, that. A minor correction. Because as the show was ending, they pointed out this will, in fact, be one half of the four-way title match for the Ring of Honor title. Sammy Guevara versus Brian Danielson versus Claudio Castagnoli versus Chris Jericho. Which they said would be at full gear. Yes. Which baffles me because isn't final battle like two weeks later? Uh, final Maybe battle? Three? Nah, final battle. What? What's today? The thirteenth. It's in December. I think it's three weeks later. That's still very soon. Yes. And I thought that four was a great main event for final battle. It's got legitimate stars, the Ring of Honor title, and like legitimate big global superstars in that match. That that, that may have been the biggest Ring of Honor championship match ever. But here's the problem, Vinny. Mm-hmm. Here's the problem. That four-way will not be bigger than Chris Jericho versus Daniel Bryan for the Ring of Honor title one-on-one. Fair. Okay. And uh, given that Danielson beats Sammy, and Mm -hmm. Sammy is Jericho's guy, and there is a four-way for the Ring of Honor title at full gear, I don't know if Jericho is going to beat Bryan Danielson, but my guess is that there will be something that happens in that match to set up a one-on-one match with Jericho versus Danielson at Final okay. Battle. Well, that's my question was going to be, is what what main event could they do? That would be my guess. Uh, that, that, but that would make sense. Yes. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid, and so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, and uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up and there were Ewoks in the tree. That was definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down, and all of a sudden I was like, I woke up later. This is the weird thing he says. Yeah, it is. Well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.